I'm just going to introduce myself as if you are my interviewer, like you are interviewing me for a job. So I'll just tell, tell you everything I usually do when I say in an interview. <laughs> Anyways, um, my name is Anu. What? No, someone's saying he's from Nigeria. He's a Nigerian now. <laughs> Bone bread, butter, dumped <laughs> in Nigeria. Okay, like one ahead. of my one of my very very um, uh, men, celebrated mentors. We always say you would say is a Nigerian born Canadian. Okay, uh, born <laughs> Nigerian. Just in case you you want to clarify. Um, so I've got about thirteen years of IT experience. Uh, I started my career as a web developer in 2010. Mm, not really web developer, because now if you call it web developer, it's going to look like it's something big. It was basically an HTML website uh, guy, HTML, CSS. Technology wasn't very, very great then, like it is now. But I started as, as an HTML guy. Then I moved into building um, web applications with um, PHP, uh, I did a bit of C Sharp as well and ESP.NET. Um, then I worked a bit in telecoms. Uh, I've got my hands on a lot of things. I worked a bit in telecoms. Then I came back to IT as a full stack developer. Well, full stack developer that it was then is not what it is now because there are a lot of languages now. Uh, but then I was uh, I was doing building applications from end to end, from the beginning to the end, the database, the front end, the back end, the MVC thing and the likes. So that was what I was doing. Then I became a project manager. I became an IT project manager uh, with a reputable and a very popular organization. Then the story changed. There was a twist. Uh, we're going to move to Canada, and then the the question now is, what are you going to be doing in Canada? Um, and then the news was that everyone in Canada is going to IT. I was um, an IT project manager anyway, so I could have easily continued uh, my project management uh, uh, career. But uh, when I got to Canada, I discovered that um, Project management in Canada is different from project management where I was coming from. Basically, everything in Canada is different. You just need to learn from scratch. Canada, I, I don't know if this is a public space, so I'm not going to say a lot of things, but Canada will make you feel like you are not enough. <laughs> so you need to go start from scratch. Uh, so I had the opportunity. Should I continue my project management or should I learn something new? And then I met a guy, very respected guy, I will forever respect him, introduced me to DevOps. He says, oh, DevOps and cloud infrastructure is um, what's raining now. Uh, you can easily make six figure. And before I came into Canada, I was already making six figures. So I was like, uh, when we were coming, there was a lot of, what? So let's continue that part. <laughs> that six figure part, no going back. <laughs> exactly. But, but when I was coming to to Canada, a lot of people were like, well, you know, Canadian experience, all of those things. Why not work in KFC? Why not do Uber? Why not do, why not work in factory? Why, why not do PA job, PSW? No, uh, no uh, derogatory okay. remarks concerning PSW, guys, please. My wife is also in healthcare and she must not hear that I said um, anything except you want me to sleep in the garage. Um, so yeah, so there were a lot of other thoughts, but it was difficult for me, not because I'm proud, but someone who is already earning six figures in US dollars, now coming to Canada to start any minimum wage. I understand humility and the likes starting all over again, but I'm like, there has to be a better way out. So I met this guy, he told me about DevOps, that cloud infrastructure is the new big thing, everyone is moving their assets to the cloud and everything, and asked me to come join the training. And I did the training, and uh, that's my story. And then I became a DevOps engineer, uh, just like that. 
And um, what I wanted to say was the good news for me is that since I've been in Canada and I've, we've been here a while, my family, I've not taken any job that is less than a six figure. Hmm. And I've mostly been. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Praise Master Jesus. Ah, Lord Jesus. <laughs> okay, wait, let me just pause, let me just, um, pause you there, right? So it, this goes to say that, because when I meant, when I said in that, um, the video, the short video I made concerning this live session that you don't, we don't all like, not everyone has to work in the factory. Not everyone actually went through, you know, that humble, <laughs> humble, humble Canadian beginning. Humble Canadian beginning, you know, so it's just all about information and how determined you are to, to, um, get through with it, right? Because if we're being honest, if you would just like to share, I mean, what was the procedure like for you getting into that DevOps space? You know, even though it's because it's a new system, Canadian experience, Canadian this, Canadian that, and then you had to literally still also go and not start all over, but you still went through that whole DevOps training period or like, you know, learning period. So having to still come into the system from no DevOps experience, right? And now, yeah, you know, you have PhD in DevOps, literally. So, <laughs> so yeah, like just, you could just like shortly tell us how that was, like the procedure, was it something that was seamless? So for someone that is watching that is like, oh, okay, you know, maybe it's, it was just smooth or there was, a few hiccups here and there but it's still worthwhile and all of that it was not smooth, it was <laughs> okay. not smooth. so yeah. the thing about devops is that well it, it, again you have two choices one really either yeah. drive uber because that was like the most honorable thing i could do <laughs> let the to... uber people breathe <laughs> <laughs> no well, like I said, that was like the most honorable thing I could do because at that point it was um, very important for me to come to stay with my family. I had been working out of the country. I was hardly at home and my daughter was already complaining. I was kind of becoming a stranger in my home. So I had to move with my family, moving with my family. So, but again, I, we're going to eat, right? You know, Canada is expensive. I hope everyone knows Canada is expensive, right? It's not <laughs> <laughs> so I, it was one of two options either take your savings buy a car drive uber make some money maybe not so bad but you'll be on the road the entire day i do like driving so maybe that was why i was even considering uber or go through the stress and earn a six figure that was it was just one of two the two options both of them are hard work but which one would give me um the best of the best of returns because i'm also coming to stay with my family like i said my wife is into healthcare she's always out of the house babysitters are expensive i um like babysitters are like 20 dollars an hour i don't know if there's anyone cheaper somewhere so imagine you are doing uber you're making one and twenty dollars a day and you're paying a hundred dollars for babysitter <laughs> That's the <laughs> you're going on with twenty dollars. Hey, so, yeah. <laughs> because someone will have to stay home with the children, right? And like so I just had to say this DevOps was a it, it was either going to be DevOps or it was either going to be DevOps. Dev either DevOps or DevOps. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy. When I was learning, I know you're a kingdom influencer, so I know that many of the people here would understand. I went for Shiloh. Shiloh, Christian program uh, for one, one week. By the time I came back to my classes, everything that was being talked about looked like Greek. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't understand anything again. It took me almost a month to get back on my feet. Almost one month. I was like, at the point I was like, why do we even need Kubernetes? This thing is too complex. I'm tired. I'm not doing this thing. But then you now think about it. Do you want to go and do Uber? <laughs> right yeah so yeah. i had to put in that effort it was it, it wasn't it wasn't easy i'm not gonna i'm not going to sugarcoat my mouth 
well, I know I'm also here for marketing purposes and I'm supposed to tell you, yeah, just come, you learn. No, it's not easy. It wasn't easy at all. But um, I think I was investing at least four hours a day into it. That's like, if you multiply that by seven, that's how many hours a week? 28 hours. So I would go to work from morning till night. When the night hour comes, I start, I pick it up. I picked up the, the DevOps, the tools. The tools are a lot, like a whole lot. Yes. So you, and you need to, you need to be a subject matter expert in at least one of these tools. You get the point. So, but yeah, a, we, 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 we came, we saw the contact. Great. Now we are, we are DevOps you are, engineers. You are conquering. <laughs> you are, you are doing well. You are really conquering. <laughs> Okay, okay. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, so let's just ask, let's just throw it there. So what exactly is DevOps? What is this mm. DevOps that we are clamoring about? What is it exactly? Because some of us, we just didn't know. We don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so please enlighten us on what that is. Okay, so um, DevOps um, basically is the is a methodology that was formed um, as part of the Agile framework to improve application release and deployment times. Um, so if you are as old as me um, in this life, and I'm not really old, Shola knows I'm not old, um, you'd realize that there was, there was a time in our life that when banks wanted to do maintenance, all these telecoms company or whatever service you use, they'll tell you, oh, we're going to be shutting down our services between 12 midnight and 6 a.m. for major upgrade or this and that. Um, the reason for that was because most of the applications were working on what we call a monolithic um, architecture. And what that basically means is that Google.com, if you want to go to Google.com, and the ordinary them changing the logo, if it's a complex infrastructure, they will have to pull down the website, change the logo and put it back up. That's how monolithics used to work. But then we now moved, as time progressed, we moved to what we call microservices. And basically that means, that, that now give us the, the area where we now we can now have our front end, we can have our back end, we can have our database, we can have different services that power the applications. I have an application that I'm running now that the currency converter is an API on its own, is a separate service. So if I want to make a change to the currency converter, I don't need to touch the website. I just make that change to the currency converter and you would have no idea that nothing is going on. That's why you'd see, even, even though nowadays banks will still tell you we're going to do maintenance, but hardly would you see that those systems go down. They don't go down anymore. And why is that? That's because we are, they have moved to the microservices infrastructure. In short, some of them will even tell you the service they are updating. They, oh, we're making a, a service to our loan management system. So that means the entire banking system is still going to be functioning. Mm -hmm. That's what microservices do. So, but now DevOps now became important because that before now the job of deployment of your application rested upon the developers or rested upon the system administrators either of the two of them or sometimes if you hear things like a full full stack developer they probably do everything they deploy it all the way but now how do you want to handle the fact that you have 10 services right you have 10 different services and you now want each of them to be to uh, who is going to put those, those 10 services together mm -hmm. and that's where the devops engineer comes in the devops engineer is now the person that will take from the front end take from the back end develop the database and do everything and now put everything together that's where um devops now comes in okay uh, i don't know if it makes I, sense it looks like I, I guess I get what you explained to an extent, but a second time, I'm going to have you like simplify it in a layman's okay. term for a beginner friendly, you know, 
a beginner friendly definition or explanation that when you take one barrel, you put it in this paper. You know that kind of so so simple. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh... Just is like relatable day-to-day -day terms that we can understand ahead. Okay, let, let me look for something. Let me look for something you can relate with. So, for example, uh, you know that I don't want to use building houses because not everybody is an architect. Let me use your paper and biro story, right? Now, let's assume Olufala Love is an author. She writes books mm -hmm. and um, she wants to she wants to write a book. Let's say the title of the book is Godly Marriage, right? Uh, before now, Olushala Love is going to be the designer of the book. It's going to be the one that will write the book, the contents of the book. She's going to be the one that will take it to the printer. She's going to be the one to give it to the marketer. She's going to be the one to receive questions about it. And that one book, everything rests upon Olushala Love. But Olushala Love now discovers that this thing I'm doing is not scalable. What if someone requests for my book in Australia? What if someone requests for my book in Houston, Texas? What if someone requests for my book in wherever it is? So Olushala Love now decides that I'm going to split my tasks. I'm going to delegate it, all my tasks. The designing, I'll give someone. The content, I'll give someone. The marketing, I'll give someone. The which other, whatever it is, right? I'm not gonna put somebody in the middle. In the middle, that middle person will now be the one to get everything together, finally, right? And now, serve from there serve the customers give feedback to the marketers give feedback to the designers and all those things that person in between is the devops engineer and that is the main reason why they get paid a lot of money because they are the ones that manage the infrastructure so everything rests upon an infrastructure but somebody has to manage that infrastructure that's where the devops engineers now come in and that's where you hear things like cloud. So now back to my complex example. There's the front end designer. There's a back end. Let's keep it in three as a three tier application. There's a front end. There's a back end developer, and there's a database guy. Before now, those three used to be one person. I used to be that person. I would develop everything. I deploy, host it, and deploy. But now, the work is much. You need to scale. The front end will do his work. The back end will do his work. The database will do his work. The DevOps receives it. All of those works now plugs them in the in the infrastructure. So let's say the the thing is like uh, how would I put it? You know, all those, if you are a technical person, you know all those um, audio mixer. You now plug, plug uh, my mic one, put it. Plug my two, put it. Plug uh, output of the speaker, put it. That mixer, that's the infrastructure. But somebody has to manage the mixer, right? right? That person managing that mixer is the DevOps engineer. That's why you need to learn a lot of tools. But the person who is managing that uh, mixer, manages, should we call the person a studio manager? That person managing the mixer. Does the person need to know how to sing? No. But the person needs to know when the sound is good. Right? Does the person need to know how to install a speaker? The person, but the person needs to know what to connect to for the output to go to the speaker. Mm -hmm. So you see that that's why it's very very important because you are in the center. Mm -hmm. The developers will come to you. The database guys will come to you. The cyber security guys will come to you because you are the one managing the infrastructure. A round of applause, a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you for simplifying that. I mean, I, I, I now understand. <laughs> Someone just asked the question that, is this the same as AWS cloud computing? Um, okay. Um, yes and no. 
Yes. Yes and no. Why did I say yes and no? The reason why I said yes and no is because AWS Cloud Computing is just one of the tools you need to learn to be a DevOps engineer. Uh, uh, back to our mixer story, right? Right? Mm -hmm. The AWS Cloud, AWS, the infrastructure you run, that's your cloud infrastructure. And I know you are still going to ask me what is cloud. Let's save that question for later. But that's your that mixer that you are mixing. Mm -hmm. That's your cloud infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know how to do, if you know how to use the mixer, right? That is you being an AWS cloud engineer. But it is much more than that. DevOps is much more much than more AWS than infrastructure. AWS. So uh, let me now go back to the technical side. So we'll be looking at things like CI/CD, right? And why I said it's different from AWS cloud computing is because AWS is a cloud service provider. They have their own, or they have a cloud service for almost everything. They have a cloud service for almost everything. Uh, but then there are also some open source tools that you can use to make your DevOps like life easier, right? right? Things like Jenkins, things like GitHub Actions, they are now owned by AWS. Things like Azure DevOps, you can now integrate all of that to work with your AWS environment. But if the only thing you are is an AWS cloud engineer, you may not be able to do much because when they now start talking about infrastructure as a code, AWS version of infrastructure as a code is cloud formation. Mm -hmm. But there is one infrastructure as a code tool that is more popular than cloud formation, and that's Terraform. So if you know how to use cloud formation, but you don't know how to use Terraform, by the time you get to the market and you say, the only thing I know how to use is cloud formation, they would pick somebody that knows Terraform before they pick you. That's why I said yes and no. So it, it all depends on the amount of things you learn as an AWS cloud engineer. Docker containerization is an open source tool. It's not owned by AWS. Maybe not open source because they, they make money as well. Yeah, it's open source. But, but then the Dockers, Docker are the ones in the core of containerization. It's not owned by AWS. Every cloud provider they connect to it. So basically what I'm trying to say is that AWS is a cloud provider. So when we talk about the phone industry, there is the iPhone, right? There's the Samsung. There's the, which other phone do we have? Google Pixel. And the, There's the Press other. and others. Exactly. So AWS is just one of that. Let's say AWS is iPhone. So AWS is the most popular. But then it doesn't mean Samsung is less than a phone. So what iPhone can do Samsung can also do is that some people prefer to use iPhone. Got it. All right. I'm sure the person that has that question has the answer by now. So let's move on. So for someone who wants to start in this career, right, this DevOps journey, what are the tools you know that they'll be learning? And also what are the skills required to start? Like just, I just like to mind just a few for us to know, like the tools. I know you mentioned that there are a few of them, but you know, you don't have to learn all, you don't have to know all, like in total and stuff. But, like, what are the tools and what are the skills that you'll be needing? Um, yeah, okay. So, so um, do you need this to know anything? Nah, joy world. This is this DevOps is the sustainable one. Your question has already been answered by this live session. Is a sustainable tech skill. Okay, okay go so, ahead. Sorry. Uh, what was I? Sorry. Yeah. What do you need to know mm -hmm. to become what a DevOps engineer? Like the tools and the skills. I, I'll talk about the tools later. Okay. But what skill do you need to have? Okay. I think you you only need to have two skills. One, you need to know how to use the computer, not for, for so not for so many things. You need to know how, at least, for example, if I say, can you go to facebook.com on your browser, it's not going to look like I'm speaking to somebody who, exactly. 
if I say, oh, I need you to quickly help me edit this file on Microsoft Word, you're not going to say, oh, what's Microsoft Word? Uh, who, who made Microsoft Word? You get like, I remember when I, when I started my career as a, when I started my career as a, as a computer teacher, I used to be a computer teacher. One of them was asking me, what is right click? Like, what, I said right click, right click. And what is right click? What does right click do? I'm like, how do you want me to explain to you what right click does? <laughs> so you need to be, you need to be an IT, you, not, you need to know how to use the computer, right? Some things should not be new to you. Like if I mention something like Windows, and you're like, what, what, what's Windows? I saw a, a, what's it called? A meme the other day that like, click on my computer. I said, how do you want me to come to your computer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, you get, so that's, uh, those are the things, that's your first requirements. You need to be a, a IT savvy, not to know anything technical, but you need to be IT savvy. You don't, it doesn't mean that I'm not, the fact that I'm using Microsoft Word does not mean it has to be Microsoft Word. It could be Excel, it could be PowerPoint, it could be anything. You get like, for example, if I say, oh, uh, let's connect on Zoom and I say, share your screen. And then you're like, how do they share screen on Zoom? Well, you need to learn that before you can now start talking about coming to this part. Because this part, like I said, is hard work. So it's better if you already know all those things. Number two, is you need to have a very very oh you need to have zeal for knowledge zeal like how would i put it so protect knowledge because you can have zeal for knowledge in well for things. devops knowledge DevOps. if you want to become a devops engineer because um like we're going to talk about later we have a we have a training we have a training company where we train people to become a DevOps engineer, or I'm just, should I say we have a training company, I should say the Slim Prep mm -hmm. it, uh, trains people yeah. to become DevOps engineers. Yeah. So things I forget Sorry, them. let me just cheat that in now that you mentioned this, because someone asked, is he available to teach or, or pick someone through? That is literally why he's here. So we're just going to get to that point, but he has mentioned it now. They have, at Slim Prep, that's what they do. You know, they train from start to scratch. Eh? From start to finish, <laughs> motivational speaker. From start, from scratch to whatever, from the beginning to the end. You guys get, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah, he's going to get to that. But yeah, that's why he's here. Yeah. So um, we, uh, I forgot why I did mention that. Your second skill, you were saying yeah. you. Uh, so you, you need to have. You yeah. To so we have we. We train, right? So, but you need to have the zeal for knowledge because we're only going to train you for six months. But don't think after you finish the training for six months, you are done. You can now start doing anything you like, or you can now say, well, I'm done with DevOps. Let me go and learn uh, cybersecurity. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. You need to really, really, it takes a lot. You will have to invest a lot of time. Mm -hmm. By the time you even start working, mm -hmm. you need to be learning every day. But a lot of things will be new to you. Even me with a lot of experience, years of experience doing DevOps, a lot of things are still new to me that I, I have to that I have to find a way to understand. You get like there are a lot of things. I I don't want to I also actively work as a DevOps engineer though, but I don't want to go delve into the things that happen in my workspace mm -hmm. and the likes. So but you need to have that zeal and passion for knowledge. Like I said. I went for Shilo. By the time I came back, <laughs> DevOps became OpsDev. <laughs> Just one week. <laughs> yeah, so it has to be. You have so, to have that zeal yes. to keep at it. I think that. that's that's where many people. Because I've seen a few people that are like, I I stopped. I just I just quit. It exactly. has to be something that. Exactly. You know, Most people jump yeah. into DevOps because of the fee. The they, six yeah, you should go. Oh, and, to put in the work. oh, it looks easy. Anybody can learn it. Yes, anybody can learn it, but you need to put in the work. You need to put in the work. If you don't put in the work, you will probably be, you would, I don't want to say you will give up soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are the two things that are needed. So you don't need, you don't need to understand pro coding 
You don't need to learn. You are not going to learn coding. I'm not going to teach you coding. We are not going to teach you coding. Like I said, we teach you to become a studio manager who is managing the mixer. You don't need to learn how to sing. You don't need to learn how to join the wire. Your own is, have they brought the wire? Yes, plug it. Is it going to the speaker? Oh, yeah, take, go to speaker. You get, you don't need to understand who is going to buy the speaker. You don't need to understand, oh, is the, well, you need to understand a little bit about sound, right? Like, oh, is the bass good? Is the treble good? And all the things you get. But you don't need to understand. You need to have an idea of it. That's why you need to keep learning every day. There are a lot of programming language out there. There's Python, there's Node.js, there's Java, there's um, Golang, a new language, there's C Sharp. There a lot of new languages are coming up every day. So you cannot just say, oh, I learned how to become a DevOps engineer with Java. What if you get a job and they don't write Java at all? What will you do? You get so, so you need to learn. You need to keep learning. And what we are going to teach you is how to understand the the root because if you understand the root you can become a problem solver so let me give you an example um and i don't know if i've told you this before shala but for people for the benefit of those who are who are online one of the things that is important in devops is to know the problem statements to understand the problem statement because you are going to be you're either going to be working alone or in a team or wherever you find yourself but you need to understand the problem statements and what do i mean by the problem statements so if they give you uh, you're a, you a studio engineer right oh let's say let's say uh, let, let me use this, an easier example you do have an iphone right mm -hmm. right so if i say oh oh shola you are in cold lake could you help me go to uh, I need to take a picture in Calgary, right? And send to Bill Gates, right? Is that, is that message, is it complete? It's not complete because I didn't tell you what picture, right? I didn't give you Bill Gates number. I didn't even, there are a lot of things that are missing. Mm -hmm. And this is where people get it wrong. They learn the skills, but they don't know how to solve the problem because, mm -hmm. and they are scared to ask because they went to learn it from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, and they have gone to, like my dear sister shall I say, lie on their CV that they have seven years of experience. <laughs> so <laughs> you have seven years of experience in photography and you say, take picture in Calgary <laughs> and send to Bill Gates and you're like, ha! Voila. <laughs> How do I want to <laughs> you can but one of the things we are gonna teach you is the problem statements. You need to understand that basic foundation. So if I you will be able to ask confidently and say, Oh, you asked me to take a picture, go to Calgary, take a picture, send to be I need this, 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 and this information. If you don't have that skill, that's the beginning of your failure. You get the point now. This easier example I say is if I give you a calendar and I ask you, take this calendar and hang it on the wall. No mm. oh, nail. You didn't, I didn't give you a nail. You, even oh. you, it's because you understand that calendar is to be hung on the wall <laughs> with nail. That's why you are saying there's no nail. Mm. But many, if you take this to a more complicated environment, they say take this calendar, nail it to the wall. You don't go there, everybody say, nothing I never do for my life. Any calendar, bring it. And I say, take calendar, <laughs> nail it to the wall. You are now sweating. Something as easy as that. You get. So you need to be able to understand the problem statements. Mm -hmm. So you now, when you now understand the problem statement, you now be like, okay, do I use a nail to hang it on the wall? Do I mm -hmm. use the sticky, those 3M thing mm -hmm. to hang it on the wall? Do I tie rope to the ceiling? Mm -hmm. To hang it on the wall. There are a lot of ways to hang calendar on the wall. This, then you now decide which one is the best. Because if you use rope to hang it, and your manager now comes, ah, where did this person learn work? <laughs> and that's what happens in the real world. I've seen a lot of. I've seen a lot in my life as a DevOps engineer. Ah, who did this work? <laughs> you get the point. Yeah. So, sorry, I'm laughing too okay. much, but. Uh, no, it's fine. I mean, the fact that I'm making it relatable, I mean, I, yeah, I'm totally grateful. I don't, I don't have powerful complex stuff. Let me understand the, the 
Coco. So yeah, thanks for that. Okay, can you just quickly mention um, some of the tools that I know you've mentioned it in a bit, in a bit, but just like some of the tools that one. And I trust that you know, Slim Prep is going to also like it's part of the thing that you would learn while at Slim Prep, like doing the training, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. So just mention some of them and like. Because I know you said there are a lot. So is it that it's all of them you will learn? Or like, if you know this one, or these two, or these five, you know you are good, that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to divide DevOps into three parts, right? And the first one would be CICD, okay. right? Continuous integration and continuous deployment. Oh, I'll start from platform engineering. You need to learn a bit of platform engineering. Then I'm going to talk about CI CD. Then I'm going to talk about SRE, Site Reliability Engineer. All of them are like in the family of DevOps. Um, platform engineering, right? You need to you need to be able to deploy your application on a platform, right? And most applications are not deployed on Windows that we are used to. And that's why I said you need to at least know what Windows is. Because if you don't even know what Windows is, then how can you know what Linux is? Because most applications are developed on Linux. But we are going to teach you Linux, but you need to at least understand how Windows work for you to be able to appreciate why most applications are developed on Linux. So that's the bit of platform engineering. You need to learn Linux commands, how to do all of those things. Um, then you need to learn CI CD. And that's the core of DevOps. And that's why applications don't have a lot of downtime anymore. That is because of CI CD. CI CD means continuous integration and continuous deployment. So basically it means uh, now I, I think you you would allow you permit me to use technical terms, right? So let's say Give me the name of a website. Google. Another one. I used Google before. Yahoo. Yahoo. Yahoo, right? So let's say I want to add a new feature to Yahoo Mail. You know, you have um, the inbox, sent items, all of those things, right? I want to add a new feature and I call it um, Vault. Let's say private space, right? I want to add that new feature. And then it's a micro, it's a service on its own. I don't want to bring down the entire Yahoo mail because I want to add something new. This is 2023 now. You get, yeah. right? So okay. it is, you, you now create a project. Your developers are working on it. Everyone works on it. Yeah. And then by the time you are going to implement it, right, you are going to be using a methodology called CICD continuous integration and continuous deployment. So that means you have whatever they are going to be committing into the central repository, we just come in. Then there's a tool that does the CI CD that just rolls it over, right? And puts it into another infrastructure, right? Now that infrastructure, I'm going to use Kubernetes as an example because it's very popular. What Kubernetes literally does is that it keeps it keeps your applications alive while you make the changes so let's say it will so the way it works it creates five replicas okay. of yahoo mail inside your environment okay. but the thing is because you are not an it person you don't know which one you are connecting to right you don't know which of the replicas you are connecting to but now i want to add a new update let's even say it's just front end to it it will now take out one of the five replicas I have. It will replace it with the new one I'm putting in. So that means I have four old ones and one new one. Mm -hmm. If that old, old one gets replaced successfully, it will now it will repeat that task for another one, then repeat that task for another one, then repeat that until all the old gets substituted for a new. If you do that, are you going to have a downtime? You get the point now. So those are the things. That's how CI CD works. So uh, Jenkins, GitHub Actions, GitLab Runner, Argo CD. There are a lot of tools that do all of those things. They allow you do your. They, we call it 
pipeline. You can run your pipeline. Azure DevOps, you can run your pipeline. You pass your code inside, pipeline. not the oil pipeline, no. You pass your code inside that pipeline, then it pushes it into Kubernetes. Kubernetes does that replacement, and you don't have an idea what's happening. You just wake up tomorrow morning, and you see that there's a new feature. Or you browse one hour ago, you browse, it has happened to you before, right? One hour ago, you are on this page. By the time you refresh the page, there's something new there. Yeah. And you didn't think, you didn't, nobody sent you notice. Nobody told you anything. That's the job of a DevOps engineer. Then the SRE, Site Reliability Engineer, the job of the Site Reliability Engineer is now to make sure that after all of this is done, we need to keep the lights on. We need to keep the applications up and running. Because yeah. what's the essence? of you pushing something and then it works today you wake up tomorrow everything is dead you get so you now with that you need to now start setting monitoring tools alerting tools in place you need to maintain your clusters you need to maintain your pipelines you need to now do some cloud related jobs and the likes it's a lot of tools but if you ask me what do i need to do devops from engineer linux git um, there are a lot of it, GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, um, Linux, Git, Jenkins for your CI CD or GitHub Actions or GitLab Runner. There are a lot of tools. You need to, all of these ones I'm mentioning, you need to be a subject matter expert in each of them, in one of those tools in that circle. Okay. Uh -huh. After Jenkins, then Docker containerization, you need to be a subject matter expert. Then the cloud infrastructure itself. That's where an AWS cloud engineer comes in. So you'll be an AWS cloud engineer, plus all of these things I'm mentioning. There are a lot of cloud providers. There's AWS, there's GCP, there's Microsoft Azure, there's Alibaba Cloud, there's, um, hey, what's this one? Digital Ocean, there are a lot of them. So, um, but AWS is the most popular for now. Azure is really, really trying to catch up. You know, Microsoft, they don't lose. Microsoft is really, really trying to double up to 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 get customers from AWS. Um, then you now need to talk about container orchestration. We are now looking at Kubernetes, or if you are using a cloud tool, maybe ECS, Amazon ECS, Elastic Container Service. Um, then once you do container orchestration, we now talk about infrastructure as a code because life cannot be hard. So they created infrastructure as a code that you put all your infrastructure in one code. The moment you deploy it, everything just comes on. Boom. You just, you're just drinking coffee. That, those are the days when DevOps engineers drink coffee at work because they have done the hard work in putting their infrastructure in a code. Mm -hmm. Once they just pass it into the pipeline like this, they are just drinking coffee. They just, they just say, sit tight and drink a cup of coffee while we get this ready. So infrastructure as a code is also a thing and the likes. So there's a lot of things that, that you have to learn. But one of these things, all of these things I've mentioned, you would need to become a subject matter expert in each of them. Not just Jenkins. You cannot be a Jenkins professional and not know anything about Linux. It doesn't work that way. You need so like to be how many are we talking about now? Did I mention six or seven? Okay, there are Yeah, at least those seven. But I'm sure you share the flyer later, right? Everything we put in there are the things we are going to teach. And then you are going to become, uh, you have to, to become a subject matter expert in each of them. Or else they will ask you to go and hang calendar and you put it in the roof. And then your manager, you know, there are some things that will happen. Your manager, ah, bad market. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, so okay someone just asked what part of linux do we need to all learn all of it all of it okay no. <laughs> oh, so the thing is this um i'm going to return the question like this and say what part of driving do you need to learn mm, 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 mm. don't leave me don't <laughs> leave me <laughs> you can relate right so yeah right. when we are talking about driving for a first time driver mm. you're like do i need that's the same question you will ask mm. do i need to learn all of driving mm. really mm. you get uh -huh. so what, what what part of what part of lean driving okay. you need to learn? so okay. what i wanted to say is you get used to it that's why you need to keep learning mm. so for example 
well dr like driving for me though even if i don't drive one year once i come back to it, it comes comes back to my head right but like linux if you don't use if you don't get used to it you forget a lot so i tell my students you don't need to cram by the way we've graduated two sets now i've had people who have gotten jobs that i'm quite proud of they even have certifications i'm sure you know some of them i'm like how do these people pass certifications like this some of them even have three certifications i'm like are you are you joking it's devops now it comes to canada to count bridge uh, apparently <laughs> so uh that's what i'm what i'm trying to say so you need all of these things like i said you need to become a subject matter expert but you don't need to cram it that's one mistake people make you need to understand the problem statement in short learning the problem statement is more important than learning the tools because if you don't understand the problem statement you would mess up the tools are useless right you get so if you need to learn driving if you drive do you use your wiper every day when do you use it? When it's raining. Exactly. Do you need to learn how to put on your wiper? Mm -mm. Yes, now. You do now. When uh -huh. you are learning yes, to drive. Yeah. Yeah. You get the point now. You need to learn how to use a wiper. But you may not need it until there is a need for it. So that's why I said you need to learn all of Linux. But don't stress yourself. Everything is online on google chat gpt has even made life much easier mm. so you don't need to cram it mm. if you are you if there's, that's why we have resources like stack overflow people have problems every day so there are a lot of resources though you are not the only one so don't go into the workplace now thinking oh if i ask this question they will say it's stupid no there you are not the only one even your guy doesn't know the audience it ain't you is that is that that i did it today <laughs> It's idea yes, that everyone thank is using. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. I would have given some real life examples about my work, but like I said, this is a public space. But when you <laughs> come in with us, I'll give you real life examples. Come in. That's why you should go in. Go into the inside, the holies of holies. But the true cost <laughs> is your test for knowledge, not even the money. Yeah money you can spend the money is maybe i don't know what you think pricey or something but if you are in canada the money is not actually too much it's like your the amount you spend on groceries for a month right but the true zeal is knowledge the true the true payments the true price is your zeal for knowledge because Thank you. you will definitely make the money back we're talking six figures if you learn this thing your first salary will pay the money you used to learn and we even buy you a new laptop brand new laptop okay yeah thank you thank you so much for that um by the way before i go on because you know because i, I got you guys i got you <laughs> so um there's a special discount if you're going from me if you're going to train with at the sleep prep from me and also for those who are in Nigeria. Do you want to talk about that now or um what do you have discount for me too? What? Sorry? Do you have discount for me too? We discounts. You that you are, you are supposed to what that's in this say you're supposed to give away for me. Nah, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um on behalf of uh, the we used to call him principal. I'm sure he's he's in here yeah, somewhere. Uh his name is Tess. Um we we is gracious enough to give some form of discounts if you are coming from if you are paying if you are live, basically living in africa but mostly nigeria right so there's i think there's a way you can pay in naira there's a good discount if you are going to pay in naira but there's there's more there's more information about that but basically you pay how would i put it but there's a there's a good discount if you are going to or there's a good offer let me not say good discount there's a good offer a good because offer. you understand that the, the naira the naira to canadian dollar rate is is is, is off the roof so when when you now convert this money to to, to naira you'll be, ah yeah <laughs> yeah so there's a good offer for my people back home and you really want to learn you can the good thing is he can attest to that 
I think you started working as a DevOps engineer, right? Even before coming in. Yeah. So you okay. can do this from anywhere, literally anywhere. So whether you learn back home or whether you're planning to migrate, and I was saying to someone yesterday, that, and just like the question the person asked about how, um, you know, they can like the tech skill that is needed that is sustainable in canada this is one of them right and i'm sure it's going to get to that this is one of them because it's in demand and you can actually even work from anywhere and if you're really that good i've heard of you know cases where i mean canada offers lmia for such you know someone, they need you someone told me about that last weekend i was like wow they need you you so, work in, in one of these big companies here and they literally brought him in brought his family <laughs> i'm like wow they bring really you in he did an interview you from nigeria mm -hmm. and they brought him but that's you, like I, I won't give you too much hope but no i mean i'm not saying that i'm just saying that it is possible right so yeah. it's something i'm just trying to say that it's not that you have to wait till you land in canada or that is only for those in canada it's from anywhere they're devops engineer all over the world working you know you could be in europe working for a company in you in the u.s and in the u.s said with that their usd is even is even you know uh -huh. so, I had a company just so in the uk actually reached out to me to work remotely okay so you can work and you can do multiple so imagine earning 12 figures in a month even though canada will collect their own but <laughs> your has left six there. figures now it's 12 <laughs> figures but I mean, so it's just something that, you know, if you have the zeal for that knowledge, please do not sleep on it. Okay. So, um, yes, quickly, let us talk about, um, I think we've pretty much covered, or would you still like to add something on like what would be learned or maybe let me put it like this. Um, so at sleep prep, right? So we're talking about sleep prep what is you know what does slim prep do because i think you know you mentioned agile scrum masters or other stuff that i'm not sure it's just limited to um devops so if you'd like to just tell us about this like slim prep the institution or the you know the, the yeah the institution more like what it's all about okay. and like what uh what people would learn when they come into um for this training how okay. long it will take you know just the necessary info okay so before that i'll just like to say that um i lost my line of thoughts i wanted to say something i'll remember later but yeah um slim prep first of all i'm just going to read it out so that uh, it's going to sync better it's a consulting and coaching company focused on agile business transformation building products, web and mobile, and practical training from seasoned subject matter experts. The Slim Prep is on a social mission built on a passion for seeing individuals and organizations excel and attain their goals while aligning knowledge with skills, with global standards and best practices. Our courses focus on delivering practical knowledge that is needed to excel in the world of today at a pocket-friendly cost. So basically, we we have and that's why i um, i bought into the same prevision we have a, a passion to see people move from where they were to where they can be so slim prep doesn't only have courses on devops um, we also have courses on agile and scrum on product ownership product management project management cyber security devops so we do a whole lot of things basically the vision is whatever wherever you were before you can be a better person you can you can make more you can make better use of your time because you know here in canada they pay for your time right it's per hour isn't it yeah so you can make better use of your time you can make better use of your energy that's what we do and that's why we focus on these courses by bringing in subject matter experts that do that do a great job um we also have um we have real life projects so if you come learn with us you have a real life project to work with we're not going to employ you because we want you to go into that to the market 
but we will give you oh I, I didn't know that there was a question like that we will give you enough real life experience that when you go to the market you are speaking as someone with experience i i remember what i wanted to say go ahead. so we had an information session okay. earlier this week it's recorded if you want to know a bit more about everything we've spoken about you know this social media is mm -hmm. social and technical if you want to know a bit about the real life work is it something that is interesting in, enough for me to invest in you could reach out to our host she's going to share that information session with you we don't charge for that one that one's free okay so um back to devops can we talk about like the opportunities out there wait i think i have i have a question oh, what their question was yeah. um so someone said what is the job market like compared to someone who actually codes and also do all of these i guess all of those you know things that you mentioned like uh, tools kubernetes and this stuff i don't know when the person i don't know what the person means but that was what the question okay. so first of all first of all even if you are someone who codes, right? Mm. Even if you are someone who codes, mm. DevOps is still pretty new. So you would need to learn these DevOps tools. The only difference between you and somebody who has, who is like coming from say customer service mm -hmm. or pharmacy or nursing or law is that you have like an idea of the things they're going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. So you just need to spend maybe two months learning these tools and then you fire up right but someone who does not have any of this experience before mm -hmm. would need to now we have to start from the beginning for mm -hmm. the person we need to start from linux we need to explain to you what is git what was the problem what you know i always talk about problem statement all of these tools were created to solve a problem mm -hmm. so if it doesn't solve your problem you don't need to use it mm -hmm. there are many people who don't run on kubernetes mm -hmm. they just run on compose I know a couple of them because you don't need it so it's just like my former colleague will say you are taking AK-47 to shoot mosquito mm -hmm. why that's why <laughs> you get <laughs> so yeah um, you don't but you need to understand um, the, the basic concept so as a developer if you I developer or if you wait develop, and that's why I can teach DevOps because I was a developer at the point of my life. So learning DevOps, I still need to, I needed to go through that ladder mm. of learning, but it was easier for me to learn. And that's why I can teach it because I can easily align. But if you, if you are coming in from fresh, from zero, because we call our course zero to hero, right? If you are coming in from zero, you need to spend some time to learn the basic concepts, see how it works in the real life environment. Okay, we've got this application, we've got this tool, what is best for us to use? Uh, I, myself, and one person from the first cohort, we were working on a project like a what's it, pro bono volunteer project or something. And then normally what we taught them in class was Jenkins. But then for you to use Jenkins, you need to set up a cloud instance. You need to keep it running all the time. Well, you can use Lambda functions. You can use um, code pipe, the code pipeline, yeah, code pipeline and the like. But we thought, okay, since it's just a small application, they're not paying us for it. It's real life experience. They really need this. They need it uh, containerized. Let's just put it on GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions is free up to a point. Mm. We now have to use that. So you get the point now. But with that, that colleague of mine, because we didn't teach them GitHub Actions, we taught them Jenkins, had to go and learn GitHub Actions mm. so that she can speak the same language with me. So that's the way it works. If she didn't have the idea of Jenkins, she wouldn't be able to learn GitHub Actions. Two weeks ago, I was showing my students when I was in class how to use the other cloud infrastructure because we, we are based on AWS. We use more of AWS, right? But you may get a job we have students that got jobs in azure you get so, so how will you survive you get so i have to take them through azure we have, I have to take them through gcp you get the point but if you get a job and it's aws you don't need to learn azure you don't need to learn gcp so basically that's about that the job market used to be hot during covid it was very hot because people were staying at home their servers were in the office people were not allowed to go out 
So many people started moving their things to the cloud. So with that, there was now a very high demand for cloud engineers, for DevOps engineers. There was a very, very very high demand so the market was very hot then and that was when a lot of people would just go and learn devops and then get the job they now break the infrastructure I, i've heard a lot of stories in my life you get uh, the one that they will give seven years experience uh, yes yes <laughs> okay it's just like saying i have i have seven years experience managing social media then i'll say oh set up instagram live for okay. instagram like <laughs> Break this table, please. Please don't please. Let, 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 so you you need you really need that experience. If you don't have that experience, it will show. Cool. If you sure, come yeah. to me and you are on my panel, I can tell if you have the experience or not. Because there are some things you will say that I will know that you learned this thing in school. If you start telling me how I deploy my applications on IPv4 using IPv4 uh, network and traffic, I'm like. You, you, the person that is interviewing you already knows that is IPv4. You get, <laughs> you get the point. So yeah, that's the that's just the thing. But now about the market, there was some economic downtown earlier in the year. But what I've noticed is in the past two weeks, the market is is catching up again. So even some of our students are getting interviews every day. Um, even myself, I I tried to be as private as possible on LinkedIn, but recruiters still manage to enter. I'm like, you people should not tempt me, please. Please, I'm working. I'm making enough money to feed my family. Don't tempt me. But they will fight. Some will even send you email. They will be like, oh, based on an application you made in 2000. <laughs> yeah, so the market is opening up now, and it's good. It's, okay. it's good. Okay, that that's good so quickly can you touch on because i've had people i'm not even trying to shake any table here of like i, I mean maybe it's a general thing even when we went to school sometimes they'll tell you oh we're going to help you you know with job with resume with this with that and after school you're just left or your is your case and you know you probably can attest to that there are cases like that so can you tell us like a bit of the post graduation support that people would be getting, you know, from your own, basically what makes your own institution or institute different, your own training session different from others? Yeah. So. Okay. So um, for me personally, and I'm sure I'm speaking for the whole of Slim Prep, mm -hmm. um, we we take every student. We, we take everything as a relationship because we know that every student has the power to bring in 10 more, 20 more, 30 more, right? So if we do a great job with you, you would definitely bring yeah. someone back. Yeah. So we don't leave you when you're done. We, are not, mm -hmm. we, we would do a resume review with you. We'll help you with sites where you can get jobs. We'll even do interview preparations with you but we will not show up in the interview for you it will still be you yeah. that will go and do the interview if you now go and say something <laughs> and you will learn for that person because that needs to be said too that's so why i said it's that for knowledge you need to have you you need to gather the you need to stand yeah. on your own you then need. they will now carry you yeah. right all, okay all the people that's i said true. that we trained and they have certification they did it on their yeah. own they did it on their own Although what we do, like I mentioned, we have, you get like, because we're an IT company, we get IT projects where people want to develop these, or this person wants to develop this application that has a mobile app. Another person wants to develop this to help with this GPS traffic tracking or something, you get the point. So we help, um, we bring, if we see that you're good enough to, because sorry, I mean, we're blunt, but I don't like wasting my time. So I wouldn't put you on a project, because we are talking real life project now. I wouldn't put you on a project when I know that you will not deliver, right? But if we see you are doing well enough, we'll bring you on our project, okay? You would experience the agile lifestyle, the scrumming, the daily stand-ups, the, the, your tasks in the infrastructure, we'll assign you tickets and the like. So we do, we can, we do those things. Then we have in a pipeline, um, how we can set up 
a recruitment company. Slim Prep has a very large vision where we get the jobs, we prepare you for the interview. You are still the one that will go and stand before the interviewer, the hiring manager, right? Mm -hmm. But we we'll, we'll try as much as possible to make things easy in terms of getting the job. But everything still depends mm -hmm. on you. Right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, you, I mean, I, would, I was expecting, or I would like you to expatiate on the job market. So like what's available, what is, you know, what's the pay like, um, what's the office environment or the work system work. Yeah. Work environment, like maybe on like some days or day to day basis, like for someone that's has no clue about this thing, but they really want to learn and they, they are foreseeing six figures, six figures, six figures. Okay, how do I get to that six? We know that, okay, you need to learn, come and train with at the same prep. Uh, then afterwards, you know, the job, yes, you said that, okay, there was a downtime, but it's picking up, thank God for that. But like, in terms of that six figure, how sustainable, how am I able to fit in? And also, I don't know if you mentioned it, but the post support that you get is, is it, okay, the part of the post graduation support, does it include maybe if, of course, I know my onions, right, but I'm at work and I just hang, can I reach out that, and by me, this thing, can you help? It's not that I'm coming to, for you to do everything, but like, you know, just that support. So like, what's the expectation like? For, so, what is, so ideally, what we would tell our students is that we will give you one month on the job support okay. one month on the job support but we've run we've run this thing for this is our third course that we're bringing and lectures are starting on monday mm -hmm. um people from the first course we still talk every day we still rub minds we still like solve problems together you get again organizations have a lot of privacy so it's difficult for you to now say oh Come and see the problem but if you can explain what the problem is we can tell you oh this is the most likely solution can you try this did it work you are still the one that will do the job mm -hmm. but we will provide you as much support we had we had a, a one of our students that is already working in a reputable company like i think top 50 company i'm not going to mention the name of the company but she had a problem at work and they just told her go and do this like the problem statement thing right and because, well, the uh, tasks they've been given and she's been doing so well. So, but this one was a more complex task. And then she came, she shouted out on the group with our other, because we, we encourage community. Mm -hmm. Ah, help me, help me, help me. They will carry me go where I don't know. <laughs> and then that same night, because again, you have to show up tomorrow morning and say, oh, this is my ticket. This is how far I've gone with it. This is when I'm expected to complete. These are my blockers and the likes. And she was like, oh, uh, that same night we came together we looked at the task and and we're like no this request is not complete she's like no i'm very certain my manager gave me everything i need i cannot go back if they say i don't know the thing what do you want me to do i said no this request is not complete go back to your manager and make a question guess what the request was not complete <laughs> so if, imagine if the community was in there do you know how long it's going to take for she would have probably messed up the infrastructure and damaged a lot of things before realizing before our manager and I was, ah hey what did i tell you what are you doing okay. so um we do pro we do encourage community we don't let our people go you can ask anyone that has trained with us you can you can hit us up at any time of the day we're always there for you we got you we got you um, <laughs> Okay, and also that six figure is certain because that's what me I like to hear. Six it's figure is, definitely is, that. Like is, I told you, I haven't taken any DevOps job that is less than six figure. If you go on um what government of Canada job bank, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm not connected to my laptop. If you go on government government of Canada job bank, the median rates mm -hmm. for a DevOps engineer, you know they usually have this median rate thing. Mm -hmm. The median rate for a DevOps engineer is fifty dollars per hour. It's right there. Mm. It let me let me check. Maybe whether it's even fifty two dollars mm. you get. So if you multiply fifty two dollars, how how many fifty two times forty hours a week or how many hours a week do we do? Oh, it's fifty dollars per hour. So if you multiply 
52 times 40 hours a week times 52 weeks in a year, you'd see it's six figure. So even the government of Canada recognizes that it is six figure. And this is Canada, we're talking about the entire Canada, not just Ontario or something. The, and you know what median wage means? It means that this is the average amount there, yeah, and it could be more. There's one I'm looking at, looking at here, it's 120,000. So it depends on your level, because, okay, that brings me to my next question. I wanted to ask, like, what are the different, you know, job roles that are available? Mm -hmm. So even within that um, uh, DevOps, you know, as a whole, what are the type of job roles that you're expected to have? Because, I mean, that would also determine, and the years of experience would determine how much you would earn, right? But we know, certainly, six figures is sure. Whether you are a beginner or you are a whatever. Even though most people used to claim I'm a seven years experience person, even at seven months, but um, so we just let us know what are the kind of job roles or job titles that are available you know, when you learn that? Well, the first one, obviously, is DevOps engineer. Mm -hmm. The other one is cloud engineer. You could check these things on LinkedIn. You would see the jobs and the amounts they are paying. Not everybody gives out their amounts, though. Cloud engineer, there is site reliability engineer. There is um, platform engineer, like Linux engineer. They'll put it there. Um, there is automation, CI, CD engineer, uh, integration engineer, the systems engineer, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of job roles there, but all of them circle around DevOps. So if you just Google DevOps salary in Canada or DevOps salary in the US, you're gonna find a lot, a lot of it in the DevOps and US is also six figure, but it's even US dollars. So if you are in the US, you you I have I've got friends in the US who end up to 180,000 US dollars per annum. Just like, oh my God, Canada is so conservative. And it's the same work we're doing. <laughs> you get so, Yeah. The, these are the, these are the um, uh, integration engineer, deployment engineer and the likes. Okay. So, um, well, let me, let me just reiterate this, that from what you said, anyone can learn DevOps from anywhere yes. and from any background. Yes. As long as you have the zeal for knowledge in that you know, um, field and you have the basic computer skills, right? Mm -hmm. you, like you mentioned, those are two or are there more? But I just wanted to establish the fact that, so if someone is watching and they're like, I want to switch careers, you know, um, I want to go into this tech thing, but I really don't know, you know, the experience stuff, I don't really know much. So, but just to say that anybody from anywhere, from any background can learn DevOps, correct? Very correct. Very correct. We've got people who are, who, who don't even have IT experiences. We, we, that's bad English, right? <laughs> it's allowed, it's allowed. <laughs> we have people who don't who, who did not have prior IT experience that are doing well. I've got one very close one to me he is a pharmacist and he's already got the certification. He's got a DevOps certification. So if 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 he can do that and he's a pharmacist, a, is he, uh, coming from the anywhere? The penicillin guy and uh, antibiotics guy. <laughs> but now because it's, I mean, let me just say, because I made a video just recently when I was talking about don't come to Canada if, and one of the things I was talking about was you know learning a tech skill or no, particularly when I mentioned licensing in Canada. Because to be honest, I mean, for a pharmacist to start thinking, no more, let me help myself. It's because. Yeah. The, the licensing yeah. procedures and everything in Canada is not because the person is not, you know, just moved in. And we've also got someone who is an architect. We'll, you know, we'll so because having class. to transition from some yeah. of those those career paths from back home mm -hmm. is, is hard. So people just yeah. like let me start and know that this is my. So we'll, yeah, we'll, anyone. We also got someone who is a renewable energy engineer, basically working with solar mm -hmm. wind. he's mm -hmm. got a job now as a devops engineer because he said that when he looked at the how to become certified what what's that thing how to become a registered engineer in canada is like ah, 
these people is this how long i will have to be doing yes i yes sir, before i become this thing so yeah so we have a question here that says for someone who goes to work early in the morning so like how many hours can be dedicated to learn uh question. like i said i i was spending four hours a day okay. at least four hours okay yes thank thank god that person asked that question because i want us to establish the fact that you had had the experience like you had been in tech mm -hmm. or it you know prior to that so maybe mm -hmm. some of the things are not new to you no it was all totally new so it not for hours before then, an average before then i had worked with aws right mm -hmm. but it wasn't a lot so when I entered and I saw, oh my God, AWS is massive. That, that's just AWS. Mm. I'd never heard of Jenkins. What is Jenkins? Who does Jenkins? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never heard about Kubernetes. I told you guys at the point, I was like, why is Kubernetes this? Why do we need to learn Kubernetes? Because it's complex. But when I fell in love with it, man, I was so happy. You get so, yeah, you don't need to be average of four hours a day. Yes. Yeah. An average of four hours. You don't and you don't need to quit your job, please. <laughs> In this Canada, we even quit job to learn something. <laughs> okay, so um this question says most of the jobs I'm seeking here, so I'm assuming this person is a um DevOps, you know, somebody. <laughs> He's already into that. On LinkedIn are seeking job experiences, even the entry level jobs. How can one by pass that great question because <laughs> this is a canada, mm. canada is a country that will be asking you for <laughs> canadian uh, experience not, not only canadian experience they will be asking oh. you for five yes. five years postgraduate experience and you only graduated two years ago <laughs> there was somebody that graduated two years ago but has five years postgraduate it's really unfortunate I don't, I, really so, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how it works in the US. I think US is a bit more liberal on that side. But basically, um, when you sign up with us, you're gonna take, we're going to take it for you as if you have started working with us. So from the day one you sign up with us, you have started working mm -hmm. with us. So you started getting the experience. So you have started gaining the experience. Mm -hmm. So it is how constant you are how much you perform that we now determine whether we can refree you because we don't want you to now go out and now spoil our name mm -hmm. you get okay. so the moment you sign up with us we you have started working for us and we are happy to reference you in short we we have almost like a mechanism where we ask people to refer uh, to send us referrals so for example if shola signs up with us which i don't know if it's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> you and you become a, me here, I become a DevOps engineer and you are searching for a job. We will use our network to get you in the front line of being shortlisted. The rest is up to you. But yeah, basically you we can we will put our name behind you to say this person has worked with us. But it it's not everyone that would get that privilege has to be or that, that, that you know you your need to know it you get you need to know it then we have no problem referring you but it's, we definitely will not give you seven years <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much does the training cost i have this on the flyer though but do you want to talk about that and well, uh, like i said yeah there's because, a because, sorry, go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead okay yeah like he mentioned earlier, I don't know if this person had joined them, but there's a there's a uh, an offer for those watching, those that are back, you know, in Nigeria or like Africa, Nigeria mostly. <laughs> but I mean, others are connected, so you can send a DM and so we can work something out. But there's an offer for, you know, because of economy and how our presidents doesn't want people to breathe, you know. <laughs> So we are, we are making that we are, we are trying to make you know accommodate and make things easier for people so um you can send a dm to me or to at uh, the slim prep that is pinned on the screen for that offer that you really want to learn and you're back home and you can you know use naira 
to learn there's a there's an offer and all of that right yeah am i yeah, yeah. So you send me naira but if you're in canada um just use, canada, please, <laughs> just use a lucia last code you can get a discount but it costs the, the cost is on the flyer <laughs> or do you want me to mention the cost yeah go ahead i mean it, to make it easy for people we kept it at 500 dollars a month that's why i said that's just the amount of your grocery it's less than your rent mm. right yeah yeah, yeah. So 500 dollars a month and but they are paying all at once we have a discount of uh we, we, you can pay two thousand eight hundred dollars because it lasts for six months right mm -hmm. so 500 times six is supposed to be three thousand but if you are if you if you are paying in bulk um you can pay two thousand eight hundred dollars but don't forget if you are using the code olushola love or is that the code um you can get even more discounts because i love you people i love you people am i not i love you people <laughs> okay uh thank you so much i hope that's clear so the training is for six months i don't know if we mentioned that all along so it's for six months and that's the cost so if you're paying monthly i mean if you're currently working it's a commitment it's an investment that you can definitely make i know people that are in this store for i know people and they are yeah he is one he is what he is a people this man that you people are looking at that you're just you're just using small eye and they say that's in your and for you carry room he's a people he's a nation this man please don't get away from me i'll be your dm size i'll be your dm you have to do give away from me shall i give me this card you have to do give away from me okay um so big boss says that congratulations i started learning devops in this one, but i stopped why i don't know if she's still on this live but why did you stop okay can we just talk about that a little because i'm if i'm being honest i know a few people that they are frustrated they, they don't tired they are they don't tired it's not tired they don't tired with you know this devil's thing and i think you did mention a little about how like you know that zeal so i don't know if i would say that is the the zeal that is not the all canada kind of water down this zeal or you know over time because you know maybe there's no job but they are not making headway or maybe unfortunately the training institution that they joined you know didn't help and was they encouraging because i've had some stories and it's just so much <laughs> like like i said we're like a community that's why we don't we're not taking a lot of students yeah. right uh, that's our, the our classes are filling up and we're starting classes on monday uh, by the way, if you want to join after Monday, I think it's still possible. If you join like two weeks into the class, you will still be able to catch up because the video recordings will be there. But if you are joining three weeks into the class, I think by the time you join, you just uh, uh, what is? Eh? What was is it? Like, I was telling you, did you not join like a month? Was it you or someone else? Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I actually joined like a month i think but that's because i did because you start with um linux right linux is like the foundation i had used the linux in in 2013 but even at that i still struggled because 2013 to when i eventually learned was quite a while so i still struggled but i managed you get so yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, you know. <laughs> no it's not that one <laughs> Was, he had already started that then. I was in, inside of it. Inside <laughs> of it. I think I had finished learning Docker. The God of Shilo shall help you. <laughs> God of Shilo shall help me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, so, so um, you, yeah. You, cannot, you can't afford to get tired. And that's one other thing we do. We have a community. We try to bring everyone together. Mm. Um, we, we, we make it engaging. We make it easy to learn. It, it's maybe it may look difficult but we try to break it down so our teaching style is like i told you everything was created to solve a problem the laptop was created to solve a problem right so why was it created? Was created to solve a problem hallelujah mm. 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 i didn't mm. lie everyone and everything was created to solve a problem Every, Go ahead. But everything was created to solve a problem the before a laptop was invented everyone was using the desktop but then a problem surfaced right that how can we move desktops around then a laptop was created right so is it wrong if i'm using a desktop no 
you get but if i want to be mobile then a laptop has to be used you get so everything every tool in devops was created to solve a problem so the first thing we are going to tell you is this is a tool there was a problem that was why this tool was created and we created it it was created to solve this problem isn't it jackets were created to solve a problem else will be wearing t-shirts but if canada could enter your body then you will know that there's a problem so so it's just like saying oh i go into the into the mall i buy a jacket but i don't know what what it does you get you get the point now so every so that we try to bring you together understand why this is needed an ipad was created to solve a problem laptops were existing and were doing well but then tablets had to also become an option mm. i had a monitor it's a it's a it's a mobile monitor just put it in your bag uh, anywhere i go i i used to travel a lot when i get to the airport lounge I just open the lap the monitor put it beside open my ipad and, and then i'm working you get so i don't need to carry a heavy monitor everywhere but does everybody need to have a mobile uh, monitor no it was created to solve a problem mm. so that's one of the things you need to learn that this thing was created to solve a problem right. if well, you don't want well, that's where people now give up yeah, okay. but if you don't okay you are now hearing things like terraform what does terraform do what on earth do i need terraform for mm. you get if you understand the fact that there was a problem that people were losing track of what they have in their infrastructure and infrastructure as a code had to be invented then you would appreciate something like terraform but if i just wake up and say oh this is terraform you do terraform in it you do terraform apply you don't know what problem is to solve you now get to the workplace and now say create terraform script now <laughs> is it what <laughs> you get so that's it so this question says as someone oh, okay as someone who is already working on devops projects and actively seeking entry-level positions do you have a structure in place to get a placement in canada ps i'm in nigeria uh again i cannot refer you if i did not train you i cannot refer you if i don't know what you can do because mm -hmm. you 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 probably have the skills you know how to do these things you have all the knowledge but this is about putting our company name on you you get mm -hmm. but, but we can only do that if we know what you can do if you want a separate arrangement than that maybe you could join the boot camp because one of the features of our training is the boot camp where we give you a real life project we put you in groups the code, the develop, the codes are already developed. Now, I'll give you a real life project. Oh, yeah, go and solve it. Can be our DevOps now. <laughs> that's, that's what our people currently are dealing with. They are really, really sweating, <laughs> and we have given them deadlines. So, if you join a boot camp like that, but the disadvantage is if you join from the boot camp because you are a DevOps engineer, and then we discover that you're not as good, as good. then we still will not refer you. Mm. You because get. i mean if you train with someone else and maybe the way you were trained because i can imagine someone coming from some other place now and coming to yours you know maybe it's a different system although the yeah. same thing you learn the, the same tools are different. Thing. so yeah tools are different and you know teaching skills and all of that but he's a really good he's a good teacher that i can say i can attest that he's a good teacher and right, they me. generally sorry you're making me to blush <laughs> He is a good teacher. I mean, they're, they're, doing, they're doing great, um, yeah, at the, the Slim Prep Institute. So, okay, well, let me quickly ask this. Is there, what's the difference or is there a difference between cloud, cloud, um, cloud engineering or cloud engineer and DevOps engineer? What's the difference? What cloud say? What's the cloud? Is it this blue sky cloud? Oh, yeah, yeah, blue sky. Right now, it looks uh, gray for me. What is cloud? Yeah, I actually wanted to ask that question. What is cloud? What does cloud mean, or like cloud computing, or something? And then, like, what's the difference? I know. I think you did mention that one of the job, um, job uh, titles or job roles, even as a DevOps engineer, is cloud. So, are they brothers and sister, or brother and sister, or are they? Please enlighten us. 
it's just like saying what example can i use pastor example that is coming to my head and i don't know if everybody is a church person let me look for another example it's just like saying um I don't know how to put it. I, I can't find you any other. You pass all one. Shall I put something? No, 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 don't worry. But yeah, basically, cloud engineer, uh, cloud itself mm -hmm. is a series of computers mm -hmm. um, that is that is um, stored some in a remote location that you can have access to. Uh, and I'm going to tell you the way I told my daughter because my daughter was like, "Oh, I met this person yesterday." His father is a this. I met that person yesterday. Her father is a this. So I asked her, what do I do? My daughter always has hilarious answers for what I do. <laughs> the other time, when I, before we moved to Canada, and I asked her, what do I do? She said, you always press your computer. I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> oh, my goodness. This children, this children, we almost somebody in the public. So this time. <laughs> <laughs> so this time I asked her, "What do I do?" She mm. said, um, "You always, you are, you are always teaching people." I'm like, "No, I'm a cloud You're engineer." Always... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I do, I do hold meetings with people, even not only people who signed up with us, even people who didn't sign up with us. Oh, yeah, you consult, you know, you consult. This one is even pro bono. Okay? Someone meets okay. you in church. Oh, I need, I need some insight about this and then we talk about it i'm not always the money person yet uh yeah so because uh, like, what you guys are charging for this something but yeah go anyway. ahead. <laughs> you want us to increase no, I mean, it, good, it so is I, no, no, it's good i'm just saying that thank you for considering uh, for letting us breathe for people uh, like us to breathe <laughs> thank you Anyways, she, she now says, what's a cloud? You're a cloud engineer? Like, with the way she said it, like, so why are you not in the sky? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I told her, okay, no, a cloud is a series of computers that is stored in a location that is not easily reachable, so they call it the cloud. She's not like, oh, so cloud is a nickname of a location. I say, yeah, you can put it that way. You get so basically a cloud is before now before cloud became a thing people used to have racks of servers mm. in their data centers racks of servers 100 200 racks of servers that's where they run all their applications from but when covid hits that was when cloud actually blew or blew uh -huh. because people could not now access those racks of servers that they put there but like I said, everything was created to solve a what problem. problem. The pe people were already having that problem before COVID. Mm. Because so imagine you live in Toronto, you have a staff who lives in Calgary, mm. and your data center is in Toronto, and there's a play, there's a way you can't use your VPN to access the server. You would definitely need to have to travel to Toronto yeah. to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Right? So cloud now became an abstraction of that thing they put all the remote servers in a remote location right with a vendor we have private cloud public cloud and then you can now access your own information your data with those computers in those remote comp in those remote locations mm -hmm. what does that mean that means you can work from anywhere right. you can hire someone in seattle you can hire someone in california you can hire someone in vancouver because your data center is no longer in one location it's now in the cloud the other day i traveled to halifax and i was working from halifax you, you get can work from anywhere. anywhere that's another advantage anywhere anywhere you can work from anywhere uh, the other day i went to montreal and it was a weekend but if i wanted to work from montreal i would work from montreal and nobody would know you get the point so but basically that is what the cloud is devops is now what you do with the cloud that's why sometimes it's used interchangeably because your main job as a devops engineer is a cloud engineer but you are going to do a lot more on the infrastructure on the cicd you are going to have to create the mechanism you don't only create the cloud infrastructure you don't only buy the mixer right, right. you need to learn 
how to mix you need to learn how to plug this one here you need to learn how to power this you need to learn how to monitor if that speaker is working or that speaker is working yeah, sorry i'm talking about mixer and cloud we just the, need the, to the main game, you have to watch from the beginning game so you understand <laughs> We we just finished praise night yesterday, so that's all I'm is that is coming to my head. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so that's that's about cloud. yeah. I think it's a good teacher. I don't need to recommend rubbish. If it comes from Olusha Love, it's because mm -mm, I do yeah, okay. He's okay. a great teacher. I'm not even trying to sugarcoat now that okay, and you guys have seen. I mean, you just said it very illustrative, so they will make you understand. You know, if you want to understand. <laughs> okay, so um, sorry, did I cut you there? No, no, no. I okay. what I wanted. Um, I wanted to say something. Okay, yeah. Another advantage with this is you can work from anywhere. So if you are pro Nigeria, you don't want to leave Nigeria. You can actually be working in Nigeria, be any, you know, be working for a company in Canada, um, or US or anywhere, Europe, UK, and be earning your six figures, and you are still chilling in Nigeria. I think I've heard of like one or two cases like that. Yeah. So if I know someone who is a DevOps engineer, it's not that he's considering you know migrating, but he's a DevOps engineer and he's earning six figures in you in them dollars or not six figure naira. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can work from anywhere. You don't have to, especially if you've not even like planned settling like traveling out. So someone asked the question, "Good day, please. What's the possibility of getting employed?" for someone in Europe who has undergone the six months training. So if they come for the training, what's the, what are their options, their you know, chances of getting a job in Europe? What's the job market like basically, I guess? In Again, uh, I'll just say number one, and I see Tess posted something there. One, it, it depends on your interpersonal skills, right? Um, I don't know well, what the job market. Okay. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> don't know what the job market is, um, but um, I do know a couple of people who work for Europe. I think that I even think there's a shortage of skills in places like Europe compared to Canada. Remember, Canada is like closed. Area. Before you can get a remote job in Canada, you're working somewhere else. You have to be very, 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 very special. Mm. Your, your father has to probably be Justin Trudeau before you can get that because they will ask you do you have a permit do you have a this do you have a that even i know of a company that probably does that but they don't even pay their staff from canada they pay their staff from another company mm -hmm. so it's a canadian company but you don't get paid from canada because if you get paid from canada you declare taxes so <laughs> so uh, and all those things so um if you are in europe i think you are in luck especially if you're not in uk because i think in the uk they, there's en enough people for the market but if you're in europe um considering the fact that social security is much better like i heard i don't know many people don't want to stress themselves why do i need to learn devil's engineer when i can eat i can wear clothes i can i've been to geneva i don't know if it has changed geneva once it's 6 p.m they close their store if you like, be running and say, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me just buy biscuits. They will not answer you. They are that strict, you get. They don't, they are not like Nigeria. They are, ah, once you want to close, 9 p.m. when you are closed, somebody call, I want to buy Milo. Ah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you get, so they don't have, they don't have stress or they don't have worries in their life. So I believe the job market, and I know people who work from Europe, who work outside Europe for Europe. So okay. I, I believe that the job market is much better. So if you are able to stand and say, I am a DevOps engineer, and you go through the interview process, and the interview process can be rigorous. So you need to know your onions. So, yeah. You want to give me six figures, you will not be real. You need to be real. It has to be real. <laughs> so, yeah. so you have to really know your onions. So you will not come out and be saying that they something let me let me leave that and, <laughs> and you we will still refer you so if you say you were working for a company in canada even better yeah even better yeah right. okay so how do they register for the training yeah well, so i use on my page but then i'll yeah. post it again on my story yeah. so you guys or um, you send me a dm mm, it's exactly better. the slimprep.com um slash devops or something yeah you would find it. Yes, they, they are starting on Monday, on Monday. which is day Monday. Monday. But yes. like he said, 
you can join in two weeks, you know, within two weeks of the start date. So you are not lost, you know, especially if you're new. But if you feel like I got this, you know, I have this experience or you are even working already as that, but because you need that experience to add to your resume and all of that, then you can just reach out to them and join in. Don't forget you have special offer. If you're going from me, just say from Lushala Love. Um, also, if you're in Nigeria and based because of the economy, you can reach out. There's a special offer for you. You know, you pay in Naira, they give you discount, all of that stuff. They are very generous with you. They are people of God. They are people of God. I've told you, he is a people. The test is a people. You know, they are people. <sighs> You, you have to do giving away. You have to do. Please, I want to come to Toronto. Let me just say now that Toronto is on dreaming. So you people should gather. You people should gather flight to get money for Shalak. It's very cool. Sorry, what do you say? You people should gather flight to get money for Shalak. It's very cool. It's you, you that you are people. Only you that you are people <laughs> that I want. Not you people. I'm going to be fine, Bara. It's you that you are people. Okay, so um, yeah, pretty much. Just reach out to at the slim prep let me pin that at the slim prep for everything all, all the info you need just in case maybe Alicia Lalo is not responding on time or you know you need it from the source reach out to them um ask me to, to send you the flyer so you get to know everything you need to learn how much is the training the training is 500 dollars a month if you're paying it's for six months six months if you're paying, you know, there's room for instrumental payments, which not everybody offers, just FYI. Um, so $500 a month, but if you're paying at once, $2,800, which is $2,800. Canadian dollars, please, right? Canadian dollars. Um, and if you want to make payments from Nigeria or in Naira, reach out to them. They'll send you the account. You know, they will also give you the special offer. So. I mean, life just got easier, and I'm really rooting for you guys, especially if you're new immigrants considering coming. I'll I'll have this um live saved on my page and on my YouTube channel, so you can catch up from the beginning and how he told his story of like how you know he also moved and started. So it's not like he brought devils from Nigeria or from from heaven, you know. It's just something that he also started. He didn't want to be doing Uber. He didn't want to do factory like some of us and you know god has really been helping him so if you are like that and you don't want to be hearing uh, stories like that you want to have a soft landing this is one of those means and i'm being honest and telling you guys as it is if you have the zeal for that for that you know knowledge in that aspect and you're really willing and able and ready they are ready these people they are ready they are teachers they will teach you your brain will open he's a good teacher He's a, let me know what he's saying this thing. He's a, he's a very good teacher, okay? So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know. Do you have any other thing that you want to add or say? The only thing I just want to say is don't forget that the true cost is your time. Mm. If you don't invest your time and you're not hungry for knowledge, mm. like I said, money is some, you would spend the money anyways. There are a lot of things you can use five hundred dollars a month for. Yeah. It's with it anyway. yeah. The true cost is your time. So, as much as we want your money, I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> but the benefit, the thing, the knowledge you take away is your own. Mm -hmm. Even if I put you on a live project, I think we got two projects running right now. If I put you on a live project, your main, your it is what you know that you will give back if you don't know it what's the point what's the point so and that that would really help all of us just don't forget that the money is good right you need to you need to what's it called you need to deny yourself of some things to be able to pay for it yeah. but the real cost money is nothing i, I don't know don't say because shola said i'm a people or something <laughs> money is really nothing money is paper money is number the yeah. real cost is your time. I was telling someone the other day that time is more expensive than money. Yeah. So I'd rather prefer to give you my money yeah. than to give you my time. Yeah. Because there are a lot of things I'm doing with my time. Yeah. So if your problem is money, it's even praise God for me. Hallelujah. It's something that is easy. 
-hmm. So don't forget yeah. that. That's why people code. book people because you pay for their time. Exactly. Is there a certificate after the training process? Yeah, if you want, we, we, it's not normal for us because what we give you is the experience, right? But if what you want is a certificate, it's not a problem at all. You get your certificate, you even get the experience as well, right? So it, it totally works. What you really and need. In, in, this, in this course, cohort, we are starting something. We'll be giving you the AWS um, Solution Architect Certificate, uh, Solution Architect Associates Exam Voucher. So mm. it's part of what it's us part of our giving back to you so we'll give you that voucher you'll be the one to learn for the exam though you'll be the one to write it but at least you have an exam voucher you don't need to worry about that it's paid for so just go ahead and do the exam after you are you've learned and you think you are yeah, you are okay. confident enough for that how generous can generous be <laughs> thank you thank you very so so kind you're so so kind oh that's pretty much it um yeah like i said it will be say it will be saved on my ig like reels on my instagram reels and on my youtube channel i'll upload it maybe today or tomorrow so just look out for that it's only shola love um yes follow me on there follow me on here follow me everywhere um and i really do hope to see you on the inside i really do hope to hear that oh you know people are coming they're using your discount code they are they are really working to we, change their you know you are a kingdom influencer so you are definitely going to bring a lot of people be better. <laughs> god is going to bring you know me Amen. um so yeah yeah i think that's pretty much it thank you so much for joining thank you for your time because time is money and it's a people's for for making out time for us, um, for you know, dishing out all that you have, making simplifying everything and really helping us understand better and you know, for people to make informed decisions. Thank you so much for your time and for being here today. Thank and you. um yes, thank you everyone for joining me today in my life, in this live session. And yeah, take care. I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best in your immigration journey, in your everything journey, in your life journey. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Bye-bye.